In this video, I will take a look at assembly files in Autodesk Inventor and show you some of the basic tools and things that you can do with them. This video will show you how to place parts in an assembly file, how to ground components, how to add basic constraints to your parts, including mate, flush, and insert constraints, and how to create a contact set. I plan to make other videos in the future to explore more advanced assembly constraints, modeling methods, and other features of assembly files. For this example, I'll be assembling the pieces of a drawer, including the front, back, sides, bottom, and knob. Then I will wrap things up by putting the drawer into a case. To begin, I'll open a new assembly file and save it with the name Drawer Example. At first glance, the assembly file looks just like a part file, but if you look a bit closer, you'll see that you have different tools in the ribbon. I'll point out other differences as we work. To begin assembling parts, we first need to place our parts into the assembly. Click Place in the top left corner of the ribbon and search through your folders until you find the parts that you want to assemble. I'm going to select all of my drawer parts except for the sides. Now I can click in my graphics window to place a copy of each part into the assembly. If you need more than one of a particular part, you can click more times to add more copies. That's why I decided to add my sides separately. I needed two of that part. Once you've placed all the parts you want, right click and then click OK. Notice that as you add parts to your assembly, the parts appear in the list in the model browser. We'll take a closer look at these later. Before I start assembling my parts, it's helpful to ground one piece. This will help me to add the other parts to this part one by one more easily. It's a good idea to select the part that serves as the base or the main part of the assembly for grounding. Right click on this part and click the option Grounded. You'll notice a little push pin appear in the icon for this part in the model browser and if you try dragging this part around the graphics window it won't move. This is now a sturdy base to build onto. We can always unground the part if we want to move it around again later. Every part in an assembly file starts with six degrees of freedom. That is, they're free to move in six different directions, the positive x, the negative x, the positive y, the negative y, the positive z, and the negative z. The objective of creating an assembly is to remove a part's degrees of freedom until it's stuck in exactly the right spot. In other words, we apply rules called constraints to each part until it's forced into the correct position of assembly. To do this, we click the Constrain button in the ribbon. There are many constraints we could use for different things, but the most common constraints by far are the Mate constraint and the Flush constraint. To use the Mate constraint, click the constraint, then click two model surfaces that you want to connect. These two surfaces will reorient so that they sandwich together like two pieces of bread, or like the palms of your hands in mid-clap. The mate constraint also allows you to apply an offset or a distance between two mated surfaces if you need one. I don't need one for this part, so I'm going to keep my offset distance set to zero and then click apply. Let's pause here for a closer look. At first glance it appears that no degrees of freedom have been removed, but if we view these parts from the side we can see that the drawer side is actually only able to move in the Y and Z directions and the degrees of freedom that allowed it to move in the X direction have been removed. To fully lock this part down, we would need to add two more constraints. One to eliminate the movement in the Y direction, and another to eliminate the movement in the Z direction. For the Z direction, I want to use a variation of the mate constraint called a flush constraint. In this case, I still select the two surfaces I want to constrain, but instead of forcing them to sandwich together like a mate constraint, a flush constraint forces them to be flush, or even with each other on the same plane. Now my part is only free to move in the Y direction. One more flush constraint on the bottom surfaces will remove that last remaining degree of freedom and lock this part down. To assemble the rest of my drawer pieces, I'm going to work my way along, one part at a time, using mate and flush constraints as needed to lock each piece down in the right spot. Note that every time you add a constraint to a part, that constraint shows up under the part in the model browser, 
So if you place a constraint by accident, you can expand that part in the browser and delete the unwanted constraint. My drawer is looking good, and I just need to add the knob. There are two ways I can handle this, and I'll show you both so you can decide which you like best. The first method would be to use the mate constraint you already know, but instead of mating surfaces together, you mate the central axis of the knob with the central axis of the hole. The two axes are locked together, so the knob is no longer free to move in the X or Y directions. It's still free to rotate clockwise and counterclockwise, which is fine for this example. I would just need to add one final mate to lock the part down in the Z direction, and my drawer is assembled. This method is fine, but it did take two steps. We can accomplish the same thing in one step using a different constraint called the insert constraint. With the insert constraint, you can select a hole where a part will be put, making sure the outer edge and central axis are highlighted, then click the part that will go into that hole, and again, make sure that the central axis and outer edge are highlighted. The two parts will snap together, and if one appears backwards, you may need to toggle the direction between opposed and aligned, and click apply when it looks the way that you want it to. This option eliminates movement in the X, Y, and Z directions with just one constraint. I'm ready to save my drawer and move on to the next step, which is to place this drawer inside a case. I have a second assembly file ready with the case already placed and grounded. In this new assembly, I will click place like I did before, but now instead of placing part files, I will place the entire assembly file. When smaller assemblies are added to larger ones like this, the smaller ones are called sub-assemblies. I want to make this drawer slide in and out of the case like a real drawer, so I will use the two mate constraints to lock down the drawer in the X and Y directions, leaving it free to move in the Z direction only. I like the way this is coming together, but there's one problem. My drawer is able to pass right through the case as if they're not solid objects. I want these parts to act like a solid so I can see if the drawer fits properly in the case. I can achieve this by making both components part of a contact set. First I right click on my drawer and I check contact set, then I right click on my case and I check contact set again. Now I can click on the inspect tab in my ribbon and click activate contact solver. This will make any parts that are part of a contact set behave like solid objects. Now my drawer is unable to pass through the back of the case. This is useful when you're trying to figure out if a part will jam against another part or if two parts will interfere when they are assembled in real life. In this case, I'm able to tell that my drawer is pushed all the way into the back of the case and the front is flush with the front of the case. This has been a rundown of some of the basic tools and functions within Inventor assembly files. There's a lot more that you can do with assemblies, so stay tuned for more videos that will show you more tricks and tips. Good luck!